42 Lessons in Love on BBC Radio Leicester. Thank you very much for having us on. We haven't looked up Zentangle Yoga actually yet, but apparently Barry Newbold Verdon says Zentangle Yoga is brilliant for the brain. Now, I'm going to ask my guests if they have any idea what this is. I'm joined by Rupal Shah, who's chairwoman and befriender at Leicestershire Sands, and Martin Warman, who's an online trainer at Mum Warrior. Afternoon, both. Afternoon. Thank you very much for coming in. Have you got any idea what Zentangle Yoga is? Is it for the brain, did you say? Mm. Is it that adult type colouring, the relaxation colouring? You might be right, RuPaul. I, I would agree. <laughs> we had a bit of a hint, didn't we, earlier on? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We had no Sorry. clue. <laughs> yeah. I haven't, no, honestly, I didn't pre ask this. I did mention it on the radio before you came in, so you might have heard it, but uh, it's posh doodling, apparently. Yeah, we yeah, were saying coloring. I've got an adult colouring book for relaxation, which I never use. You've got one? Yeah, there's, yes. there's a lot of them. Yeah, I've got it's... a couple, special pencils, special felt tips, and they've been used once or twice, and that's it. It's apparently the certain patterns. There's one for relaxations, one to help you meditate, one to um, give you a positive mind frame, and you colour it in. And But it's they're quite big patterns, and it would probably take a, a, quite some time to colour it in. And also, mm. I'm saying, it gets boring quite quickly. Oh, I don't, you see, this is where I disagree. <laughs> I can lose myself and then look at the clock and think, I've just lost an hour and I've got so much to do. Yeah. So it's great, but... What about puzzles? <laughs> love a puzzle. Jigsaws. Do you? Especially Christmas, yeah. You love a puzzle? I do, why Jigsaws don't you? Love no, I don't. I can't stand them. puzzles. Oh, I love them. The thing about all these things though, that we're uh, talking about, because it seems that we're... And we've had plenty of these discussions on the programme before... But it just seems that so many people are sort of scrabbling around to try and find these ways that we can help our minds get mm. just be back to yeah. I say normal, but you know what I mean, like yeah. back to some sort Using of comfort. Them. And you, <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, you're right though. Yeah, you're right though. And I think we just we just have forgotten certain things. And, and also it, switching off from from social media and and all of that, just losing yourself and actually just yeah. Using. I don't yeah. think it's just social media. I just think it's everything. Everything just yeah, it is. everything's given to you. I've been reading. I've been reading this book by Tim Ferriss. And he's brilliant, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. No, not, yeah. Have you heard of him? Yeah. He's, he's great. He does a lot of podcasts, but books-wise, I mean, mm. they're, they're fantastic. He, one book he's got, uh, it's called Tools of Titans, and he's basically t- got 100 people, and he's gone round and met them and interviewed them. And these could be, you know, leaders, uh, billionaires, um, athletes, world-class yeah. athletes, mm. uh, whatever they are in their field, they, they've reached the very top. And he goes around and sort of talks about their success stories. Um and he is unbelievable. Like just some of the stuff that he talks about in terms of information overload. And he, it, one of his books talks about a low info diet. Like try going on that for a week. Yeah. So switching off from things a bit more, yeah. and just see how you find it, and just communicating with people a bit more. Like he won't. He did a week of not buying a newspaper, right? So he mm. he didn't buy a newspaper. All he did was looked at the front pages, so he knew what the instant big headlines were of yeah. every newspaper. And then what he did was he just went to people randomly and asked them what's happening in the news. And the thing that they told him the most, he knew was the most topical and important things he needed to know. The little yeah. sound bites, mm. which I thought was quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. There's a quote from uh, Denzel Washington. I, I think about it a lot because I don't, I stop listening to the news and reading the newspaper, stuff like that, just purely because of the amount of negativity in it. Yeah. And his quote is something like, I've got to get this right now. <laughs> he says... Um, if you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. If you watch the news, you're misinformed. Oh. I think that's quite powerful because there's just so much going on. Not just and there's fake news as well. There's news on all yeah, different social like media platforms. Things, You're bombarded all the time, and you just you're distracted from your own thoughts. Yeah. Now, well, you know, you you have to have uh, your thoughts in order at the moment, don't you? Because you're about to compete in what 25 days time. Yeah. Just tell us about that. So it's a. a Competition called the Northwest Championships with the UK BFF, one of the largest, well, the largest federation, and it is same categories before bikini masters. As at this time, I'm going into it with a slightly different mind frame because I did one last time, which was like my icebreaker from not doing any competing for six years, proper competing anyway. So um, this is good because the last time the three things that I was worried about happened. So now I know that if they were to happen again, I, I'll I'll know what to do, and I'll be okay with it. And how are the what are the age groups like for the people that you're competing against? It's so for me, it's thirty five and above. Right. Okay. That's, so they are in similar categories of, of people. Yeah. Every, everything. There's bikini open, which is there's bikini junior, and then there's bikini open, and then masters, which is thirty five plus, and then for other categories, not mine, there is height classes as well. So, but mine's open, so it, I could be against taller people, which is what I was worried about last time, and I just had all tall people in my class. <laughs> 
So what? Are, how do you get yourself? We talked a bit about focusing yesterday. Yeah. How do you get yourself prepared for this, like mentally? It's just important to me. So um, we talked about it last time on the radio at the, at the well-being um, mental health thing that you did. And it's just about understanding what my why is. And any time I feel like this is really difficult, this is hard, I think, why am I doing it? What is the purpose? And I just hold that really strong. And my biggest motivation is my daughter. I want to make her proud. I want to make a good future for her. And if you do well with the UKBFF, you can go on to um, compete internationally and worldwide and win all sorts of medals, which can open up more doors. And so that's my that's my aim. So any time I think, like, I can't this is hard, this is tough, I'm tired, I don't want to do it. I just think, why am I doing it? And just, just taking that second to think about it makes me do it because I don't want to not get where I want to be. Okay, so that's how you mentally prepare for something you're doing. Now, yeah. in the terms of the work you do, Rupa, which can, yeah. let's be honest, be quite heavy at times, yeah. how do you then go home and take make sure that you get a break from that? Like, yeah. how do you take a rest from that? No, absolutely. Um, do you know what? Some of it is actually, well, a lot of reflection. Um, I do reflect and, you know, what went well, what could have done better. Um, and you do kind of analyse situations. I What works for you the most? Yeah, I, I, probably reading a book. You know, my, my husband, Michael, will just go and switch the TV on for a bit and just lose himself. You know, we might just talk a bit on the way home in the car. But, you know, I, I need to read a book, but also a bit of deep breathing. And to be fair... First thing I do when I get home is go and give my son a massive cuddle because I remember what it was like not to have that person in the home and you just realise how precious mm. life is. And again, it's, you know, my son just, just is your little one. It's uh, They're the ones that motivate us in the end. Absolutely. Right. Now, we're going to talk about this programme in a moment that Martine wants to talk about. Have you have you seen this, Miriam no, Margulies' programme? No, okay. No, no. Well, I hadn't seen it till uh, just become on air. It's absolutely fantastic. So I'm so glad you brought this up. We'll get to this any moment. But first, we're going to play, especially for Martine. You don't oh, know this about her. I know what this is going to be. She used to be a backing dancer for Jason Donovan. <sighs> You didn't. Long time ago. <laughs> you just fascinated by me. So last time <laughs> last time we saw you were playing some Jason Donovan, uh, apparently everyone in the office upstairs were, were dancing to the song. Were so, they? Yeah, we're going to play another one okay. for you. This time with Kylie. Yeah. Remember Ooh. this? Especially for you. <laughs> uh, Barry's been back on. Hi, Barry says, hi again, Jimmy. Zentangle is not colouring for adults, Martin. Okay, well, I had a guess. Uh, you do the repeat pattern yourself. He says, ask Monica Winford. I taught her how to do it. Okay, well, I'm, I can't do that at the moment. Uh, but we will try and look it up online. So Zentangle, apparently, it's not adult colouring. Or just write in and say what it is, so yeah. we know. Yes, please do, Barry. If you can get back on again, 81333, Leicester, at the start of your message, you're going to text. Lee's also been on. No, 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 Jimmy, come back from the dark side. Do not promote the anti-tech. Let's all switch off technology. It's an all-evil brigade. Uh, the trick is to find a balance in your social media tech usage. Don't go cold turkey. Now, I I'll be honest with you. Uh, I know exactly what you're saying, Lee. I, I still go on social media. I like it. I think it's brilliant. It's a fantastic tool. I just think maybe limiting yourself. I mean, that's I'm speaking really for myself, to be honest, because how many times do you do this? I do this occasionally. Mm -hmm. You fill time by sc scrolling a screen and then you ask yourself, why did I just do that? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the other night, do you know what? I looked up and all three of us were scrolling mm. through our phones. I thought, we're sitting together. This is really quality time. And actually just, just talk. And also, but, yeah. what about when you're trying to do something and you keep getting the notifications? Even if you turn them off and you just get the little banners that come up on your phone, they're so distracting when you're trying to get one thing done. I turn all that off. Yeah. But anyway, I still like it, so don't worry about that, Lee. Right, uh, let's talk about this programme then. It's on BBC Two that you've been watching, and this is Miriam Margulies. Yeah. And it's called, what's it called, Dead Good Adventure? Well, I'm not sure, but the clip was titled The Coffin Club. And it was it's about um, people having the opportunity to design, create, decorate their own coffins. And I'm guessing it's more for those that know they're coming towards the end of life, so that they can prepare bit better than some people can and, and they want to um get over the fear of death they want to be able to talk about it openly and they want to decorate where they're gonna end up and so that's what it's about and and i think the, the most important thing is is about talking about it because it's a subject that people just mm. gloss over or, or don't talk about that because they don't always want to manifest it mm. or they don't want to think about it but if people don't know what we were talking about it if people don't know what you actually want you don't know when that necessarily is going to be and then you could you know yeah. well they, they, in this program with miriam they actually put her alive in a in a fake coffin don't yeah. they with, yeah. the, where they sort of hold the lid over which i know is a lot of people's kind of worst nightmare yeah. um and you know the claustrophobia around it all that business but 
you you are so right. It's an interesting concept, and it it is such a difficult subject. Yeah. But I'm with you in the sense that you you have to talk about these things. Yeah. So how do you feel about it? I I personally wouldn't want to decorate one or do that, but I'm I'm open to talking about it or saying. Okay. What why why wouldn't you want to decorate it? Just because I just think personally it's a bit. This is just me personally. It would be a waste for me because I'm not a religious person. I, I'm not going to be in the box and be like, "Oh, this wasn't what, what I designed." Because I'm not going to. I'm not going to be aware of it or know of it. But it doesn't comfort me to do it. But it may do to others, and so they might want to do that. But for me, it wouldn't do anything for me personally. Happy to talk about it, say what my wishes are, but I don't. I don't feel like I need to have a a, a decorative box to go into. I'd rather put the money in something else, like like yeah, covering yeah. the the cost of everything else that happens with a funeral. We, we were talking about this, so when my son died, and, and it wasn't quite the same because it was a choice, you know, and that there was a choice there of, of different coffins. And um, we chose one that kind of was covered in this fabric with teddy bear, so it was kind of us personalising it. And it was for us, really, and, and, and to give him something that was a bit more appropriate for a baby, for a child. Um, but just thinking about, you know, what your wishes are, it, there's a lot of it with funerals and what happens afterwards for those that are left behind more than for you, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know, how, sort of, I suppose I live and breathe death, which is a pretty strange thing to say. But for me, but it is a part... I've made all my plans because actually, you know, it, it happened at a time of my life where, I, you know, I want people to know what happens yeah. afterwards. I don't want that left uncertain. What? Why is it though? And I get this. Even I, I had a, a conversation off air with Ben Jackson before I came on, and I, I was, I was asking him. I was like, "How do we talk about this without making people depressed?" Mm. So why is it that we, we see it like that? Like, why can't we just say it in the same breath that we do life, without almost having this kind of stigma attached around it? It's fear, isn't it? It's fear, it's and I think people think it's very final. And also, everyone's got different opinions as to what happens next, if anything. So, yeah. Yeah. for those that think nothing, then for them, that's like that's just it. They don't want to go there. But for those that think they go on to another place, they might be more open to talking about because that that should be just a stage that happens, and the next thing happens next. But... Do you think we should prepare for death in in the way that we do perhaps other things? Like, should we be I think you should yeah. talk about what it is more so people understand. The part in that programme was the, the lady that was um, talking about the, the coffins and everything else is that when her dad died, she felt like it was all very much brushed under the carpet and no one talked about mm. it because it was a, a painful subject. But had someone explained to her, this is what happens, um, and so she felt so she could feel comforted with what, what has just happened, it would make things a lot a lot easier for those that are are still here and dealing with death. I mean, this is what we do in our support group, you know, as an example. We get parents who've got all sorts of different ideas and religious views about what's happened to their babies, their, their children. They're kind of confronted with death at a time when actually there's meant to be, you know, a new life. So it, it, it's completely the opposite. It's really harsh, but they're faced with it and they have to get on with it. But there's a lot of conversation around, well, you know, I feel my baby's gone up to heaven or mine's a little star or, you know, they'll call them angels. Different things to make them feel OK. And actually, people just talk very openly about it. I think we do all need to talk more about it, get rid of the fear. Um, and children do that really, really well. Yeah. You know, and I think when you don't do it as a child, that's when, as you get older, it just becomes harder and harder and harder. And then it just becomes this taboo subject that no one wants to talk about. Yeah. Right, here's a bit of uh, the introduction to Miriam's programme if you want to catch it on the iPlayer. It's called Dead Good Adventure. We're all going to die. Or are we? We're out to win against sickness, ageing and death. Our own mortality is our greatest taboos. Oh, oh, she's in! I've got she's in. Clip. <laughs> I was on a mission to confront my fear of ageing and death. It would lead me to people who believe there are ways to prolong life. And to some who think old age can be cured. And death is not inevitable. I have faith in living for hundreds of years. In fact, I'll, I'll invite you to my 500th birthday party if you're here. 
Leo, that's a little bit for you. It's a very interesting program. In there, they go to this place in California called Loma Linda, which is like a market town, and they've got their own brand of stuff in this supermarket. It's one of five magical lands, they say, around the world called Blue Zones. Now, I don't know about Blue Zones, but I keep hearing it. And this is places where people are healthier and live a lot longer. And there's a great uh, TED talk that uh, Susan Pinker has done. And again, she goes to what's known as a blue zone. She goes to Sardinia, mm. where there it's one of the uh, most amount of centenarians live there. And she goes to find out uh, why people live longer there than anywhere else. And she says on her talk that 25% of longevity is in our genes. The other 75% is our lifestyle, mm. which is incredible. Yeah. And this is what she has to say. Discovered by being there that in the blue zone as people age and indeed across their lifespans they're always surrounded by extended family by friends by neighbors the priest the barkeeper the grocer people are always there or dropping by they are never left to live solitary lives this is unlike the rest of the developed world whereas George Burns quipped happiness is having a large loving caring family in another city what do you make of that? Yeah. People together. Yeah. That's what they say it's all about. Uh, there's a TED Talk by Susan Pink if you want to look it up online. Right. We're going to head to the news with Blossoms and we'll be back with Martin and Rupal after Leicester. this. Eight minutes past one, Wednesday the 1st of May. I'm with Rupal Shah, chairwoman and befriender at Leicestershire Sands and Martin Warman, online trainer at Mum Warrior. Go and look that up online if you've got some time over your lunch hour today. Now, we've just been talking about recommendations because we are in that world, aren't we, where we love to recommend things that we're watching and seeing. We've already talked yeah. about the Miriam Margulies programme, which you can go and watch on the BBC iPlayer. Uh, another great programme I talked about in the last hour, which was Surgeons at the Knife Edge, which is also fantastic. I mean, how surgeons do their job, I've got no idea. I know. The pressure those those guys and girls are under to do their work is just amazing. So that's two things. Um, Martin, what do you want to recommend? I recommend on Netflix uh, Working Mums for all the mums out there because it is hilarious and very, very dry. You've got that kind of sense of humour and just... If they've just captured motherhood and, and working and trying to fit everything all in perfectly and made it funny so and lighthearted. Just, just give us a quick praise here about what, what, what it's about. So it's a group of mums are all very different. There's one that's quite aggressive. There's one that's quite airy-fairy. There's one that's quite erotic. There's one that's quite just can't handle much. Uh, so they're all very different characters. It's all about them going back to work and how they're facing it. Like One literally just thinks about anything that's going to take away from reality. But it's hilarious the way she does it. And one wants to be like uh, she, the big boss. And so when she goes to work, she's more masculine. But then she's also in the toilet pumping milk. And then she goes back and she tries to be, again, like yeah. like the, have big balls and everything else. And it's just funny watching the difference and breaking down because she wants to be at home with the baby, but she also wants to work. But they've they've captured it really, they've captured it really well. Um, and also we've made it... Um, so you can have a little bit of a... It's relatable, so yeah. you can have a giggle about it as well. And then there's a character that's very, very highly strung and, you know, has a very different way of parenting. And Everyone's represented. Yeah, it's it's yeah. funny. It's very funny. So what's it called Working Mums? Yeah, Netflix. OK, what about you, RuPaul? Yeah, well, the thing we watched um, quite recently was The Umbrella Academy, also on Netflix. Um, I can't... <laughs> I can't remember it. I can remember it. It was that just good. fantastic. It was so good that we just, you know, when it says next episode starting in and it counts down, we just let it run. What's it about? It's a bit confusing. Um, so there are so many kids, I think seven kids with rather special powers, all very different. And um, they're a bit taken by this chap, taken away from their adoptive uh, mothers. And um, he kind of manages them and you know, tries to... Um, solve problems um yeah well it, it's worth watching well does he try and use their powers to solve problems to, in the world yes okay. solve world problems get to the baddies so okay. that's called the umbrella academy yes comedy it is, it's 